Okay, part two of our binomial theorem screencast. We're going to do some examples. Um, firstly, I want you to check the uh, your prep, um, the answers I've put into the, the solutions to prep questions folder, which is right here. And you'll see it under binomial theorem prep. Um, so go take a look there. Now, um, all right, so to, for today's lesson, uh, firstly, let's do a starter. I want you to expand this x squared plus a to the power of 5. I want you to pause the video, expand that, um, and then uh, come back and we'll compare our answers. All right, let's check our um, solution here. Now, just a couple of things I'll point out in my solution. Um, you can see that I'm going through and using this notation here all the way through. So 5c0, 5c1. Now I know what 5c0 is. I know it's 1. I know that a to the naught is 1. I don't need to write it, but I'm writing every single term out uh, just to demonstrate, make sure that we've got the hang of it. I know 5c5 is 1. I know this is 1. Okay, so I get all that, but um, I, I don't think you... There's not a lot to be gained by taking shortcuts generally, apart from maybe if you're in an exam and you're a bit pushed for time. Okay, so um, let's let's move on. I'd like to start this screencast. We're going to do some more examples because with binomial theorem, what we're doing at the moment, we're doing some expanding. By the way, the binomial theorem, this bit here, the theorem is this is the is is the coefficients. It's the development of the coefficients. That's why we took thirty minutes to do that in the last screencast, because the development of that is what's interesting. It's what. Um, uh, it's where it comes from, so there's, uh, there's no point just uh, just chucking it at you and saying use it. You've got to see where this stuff um, is pulled from, and and in that way you can see how all these areas of mathematics are are interrelated. Anyway, that's the binomial. So we're using the binomial theorem, but there's there's lots of uh, different types of uh, nuanced questions, uh, different angles, etc. So I'd like to. I'd like to tackle some of those examples with you before um, before letting you loose on the exercises. So we'll do a few examples. But um, firstly, I want us to explore the um, or arrive at, if you like, or agree on uh, the general term, the general term for a giant binomial expansion. The general term, in fact, I'll say it's in a binomial expansion. All right, now this is going to be really helpful to us. Expansion. It's going to be really helpful for us to identify particular terms in an expansion because what we're, what we're going to move away from is this full expansion business. We're going to go and target particular terms. So this general term is going to help us. Okay, so let's, let's develop it. Um, I want us to have a think about this. Okay, so each term has three elements to it, doesn't it? All right, if you have a look at this, we've got... Uh, I just pull any term out. It's got we've got element one, uh, which is the which is the Pascal's triangle, right? The coefficient. We've got element two, which is uh, one of our binomial terms, which is then raised to this power and then reduces. Oh, and by the way, um, I don't. I tend to start with my first term here, x squared, and take that to the power of five initially, but it doesn't matter. I could take the x squared to the power of zero. And the a to the power of five, and work in the other order, in the other direction, because I've got a palindrome, because I've got symmetry. It doesn't matter. I'll arrive at the same result. Um, where was I? Okay, so there are three elements: the pasc the coefficient, and then the two terms that are being that form our binomial, being raised to the different powers. So you can see them there: one, two, three. So in the general, the general term in our expansion. That we're going to really we're going to extract those three elements. So in our in our um, we're going to right, we're talking about a binomial expansion. I should say uh, what it is we're expanding. Um, right? No, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be expanding in the general. Uh, so the general term in a binomial expansion. Uh, so yeah, okay. So we'll we'll twirl it. I'm just sorry. I'm just setting this up. So for um, a plus b, so we're keeping it general, um, and we're going to raise to the power of n. Okay, so in this case, a and b are my terms, n is my power. So what is my general term? My general term is this. So this, let's work it. Um, let's work it three from left to right. I've got a five here. Now that's my n. Now that's my 
So n, this power here, is always my top, uh, my 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 first my first term in my NCR, my NCR. So it's n c um, n c r. Okay, we don't know what r is. So r is going to move through from zero right through to n and make it give us our n plus one terms. Okay, now I've got the a term. Uh, the a is going to be raised to the power of n in my case. Now, like I said, you could take that to the n minus r if you wish. Um, it doesn't matter, but let's stay consistent. I think life is easier when we do that. Uh, b raised to the power of n minus r. So here's our general term here. NCR, A to the N, B to the N minus R. If we pull out some features, my sum here, N plus N minus R, that is going to give us, I'm sorry, that's uh, that's not N there, that's R. Let's say that doesn't give us what we need at all. A to the R by uh, B to the N minus R. So the sum of these two, the sum of the powers is always going to give us N when you add our powers up. So um, oh, we noticed that with our expansions, we've always noticed that we've got those sums are giving us uh, what our power is in each case. Um, and our, our R will go from naught through to N, so that'll give us our N plus one terms. So that is what we call the general term in a binomial expansion. So let's now go and we'll use this in a couple of our examples. Okay, let's have a look at the first of our examples here. So this is what I was talking about a minute ago. Find the coefficient of a specific coefficient now rather than looking at a full full expansion. So um, we look, we're after x cubed, y, to the y cubed in this expansion. So the way to start with these questions always will be to write this general term. So let's get our general term written out. General, our general term in this expansion. Right, so let's have a look at it. Now it's a 6, so it's going to be 6. If we go over here and just work with our template, it's going to be 6CR. R is just representing all our 7 terms. So as we roll through from R equals 0 through to 6, we'll pick up all 7 terms. Now my X, if I'm going to play this to what I've written up here, X is going to be to the power of R. And then my uh, 3Y is going to be to the power of 6 minus r. Okay, so now let's go to the question. It wants x cubed, y cubed. So our next job is just to find r. Right, so we want to find r. Find r. So r is going to come from the question. I want x cubed. So r is equal to 3. That's a fairly straightforward one for us. When r equals 3, x is cubed and y is also going to be cubed. So I now want, um, I'm going to target this term. So therefore, uh, term of interest is a 6c3. It's going to be x to the power of 3, 3y to the power of 6 minus 3, which is 3. So this, it just needs a little bit of crunching now, number crunching, 6C3, 3 cubed. So 6C3 times 3 cubed, which is 27. And then my X cubed, Y cubed sits up here. Now I just want the coefficient. I'm not asked for the whole term. I just want the coefficient. So the coefficient bit of this is just this bit, 6C3 times 27. So therefore, I would write, therefore, coefficient of x cubed y cubed is 6c3 times 27 which I'll just work out in the calculator so I get uh, 540 for my 540 for my coefficient of x cubed, y cubed. Okay, let's go to the next example. Use the binomial theorem to expand 2x plus 3y to the power of 5. Okay, I want you to pause the video and go away and do that. Right, now we're checking our answer. 2x plus 3y to the power of 5. And then we're going to find this, this next part, right? So we're going to come to that in a minute. I'm going to do this expansion. Just give me a moment. 
Okay, it just occurred to me that some of you may like uh, f uh, to, to watch this one play out. If not, just hit me at times two or skip past and get to the next part of the question. So I'm going to rewrite this in full. I'm going to write 5C0. I'm going to take my 2X to the power of 5 and my 3Y to the power of 0. Okay, let's move on. 5C1 is my next term. 2X, reducing 2X by 1 and picking up, increasing 3Y by 1. So they just do, they just play this little this game, my two terms. So 2X starts at 5 and reduces, goes 5, 4, 3. And now my 3Y is going from 0, 1 and is now at 2. making sure that those powers always sum to 5. All right, expanding out, this is 1, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, so I get 32 x to the power of 5. I've now got 5 here by 2 to the power of 4, which is 16, by 3. Right, that's all x to the 4y. Now I've got 5c2, which is 10. I've got 2 cubed is 8. I've got 3 squared is 9. That's all x cubed y squared. I've got 10 again. I've got 2 squared is 4. And I've got 3 cubed is 27. That's x squared y cubed. I've got 5 here. I've got 2 here. And 3 to the power of 4, which is 81. And that's y to the power of 4. And finally, 3 to the 5, which is 243 y to the power of 5. Okay, so simplifying this one down, I should be able to pull it off at the end of this line of work. 80 times 3 is 240. This looks a little bit like the prep question. 10 times 8, 9 is 72 times 10, so I've got 720 x cubed y squared. Here I've got 108 times 10, so that's 1080 x squared y cubed. 10 times 81 is 810, Using, going with some um, nice numbers here. Now this is x, I think I left an x off here, but there's, a, there's an x in here, so it's x, y to the 4. 810, x, y to the 4. And then final term, 243, y to the power of 5. Okay, so the second part of this question is a quite a common one, right? So now we need to, we're going to use the result of our expansion here to find the value of 2.83 to the power of 5. Let's see how this works in here. How can we make this? How can we make this? Because it's 2.83 to the power of 5. So I want what's in brackets here to match up to 2.03. How am I going to do that? Let's think of values of x and y that can work for us here. So what would x need to be? Well, 2, this is 2, so maybe x is equal to 1, uh, which gives us the 2. Now I want 3 hundredths, or maybe y. 3y is 3 hundredths, so y is maybe 1 hundredth or 0.01. So with those values, x equals 1, y equals 0.01, do I get 2.03 to the power of 5? 2 times x2 times 1, 1, plus 0 .0, uh, 3 times 0 0.01, so 0 0.03. So here I've got 2.03, yep, seems to work. So if I sub these values now into my expansion, let's see what we get. So x equals 1, well, that'll be fine, because that's just 32 times 1. Um, so now I've got 240 times 1, so that's fine, times y, so it's 240 times 0 0.01, 0 0.01. 
Okay, let's see, 720, x is 1, so I'll get straight into 720. Now, y squared is 0.01 squared, so that's that's going to be 0 0.0001, right? So I've got four decimal places on that now. Right now, plus 1080, again, x is 1, so that's fine. y cubed, six decimal places, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. And it goes on 810. Y to the 4 is going to be 8 decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 243. 243 by Y to the 5 is going to have 10 decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1. Okay, so let's do, let's work this out. 32. Now, 240 by 0.01. So really, that's times 100 dividing by 100. I'm moving the decimal point back to, so that's 2.4. So that's all we're doing here now. 720 um, times 1 over, what's that, 10,000. So I am moving the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces back. 1, 2, 3. So that's 0 0.072. And the next uh, calculation is 1080 by this one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. So that's going to move the decimal place back six spots. So it'll be double zero one zero eight. Now we're going back, I think, eight spots, aren't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, we are. So that's going to be zero point zero 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 eight one zero. I don't think we're going to need this. Two forty three. That's ten decimal places. So it'll be seven leading zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, four, three. Now, what do we want? We want five decimal places. So 32 plus 2.4 is 34.4. Now, the next decimal place is, is uh, the second one. It's at seven, and there are no other. They're all zeros from there, so it'll be seven. So we've got four, seven. The third decimal place is... 2 plus 1 is 3, and then they're all zeros. Uh, the fourth decimal place is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's sitting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we've got zeros everywhere. And the fifth is 8, and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is also 8. So that's 16, and that's where it stops. So three, 4, 7, 3, 0... Okay, that's wrong. That's not a 6 because this 8 here in the 5th decimal place, three, remember I'm, I'm now looking at the 5th decimal place. So I'm at this point, 00108, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've got the 5th decimal place there, but my 5th decimal place here is a 0, and there's all zeros down there. So that's going to be an 8. But I need to know the next one. So I'm now going to go to the 6th decimal place, which is this 8 here, and then they're all zeros. So it's an 8 there, so that means I am rounding off to 34.47309 to 5 decimal places. 5 decimal places. Right, this is our last example. Uh, you'll be pleased to know before we start on exercise 1i, I think it is. Um, and I'm actually going to do the first one with you on one eye. But let's do this one. Uh, the term, now, this is, a, again, a very common type of question. These are good examples. They're pulling out the, the most, most, most uh, typically asked questions. Find the term independent of x in this expansion. Independent of x. right? So we want the constant term. So let's go to the general term. It's always our best starting point when we're asked to find a particular, particular term. Go to the general term. All right, so our general term here, it's a power 6, so it's 6CR. I've got an x squared, which I'm raising to the r. Now this minus 1 over 2x is going to look better for us, all in brackets, as minus, um, minus, and again in brackets, 2x to the negative 1, and that's all raised to the 6 minus r. Right, now this thing needs pulling apart. We need to be really careful with this. 
Okay, so um, this is equal to, let's just, we need to simplify this down. So I want to see, I just want to see what my powers of x are. So this is a straightforward index rule here. This is x to the 2r. Now what I've got here in effect is a negative 1 and it's being raised as is this 2x to the negative 1 to 6 minus r. So I'm going to pull these guys apart. So I'm going to have negative 1 to the 6 minus r and I'm going to have 2x to the... Now I'm going to multiply these powers together. So I've got minus 6 plus r. So it's r minus 6. Okay, so what I've utilized there, what I've utilized is this index law uh, where I've got a, b, um, uh, perhaps where the uh, where the, the b is raised to the power of m and then everything is to the n. I've said, well, that's, that's a to the n by b to the mn. And that's what I've done in here. Now, well, I've got one more step here because I've got a 2 involved. I want to remember, I want to pull all my x's out so I can see what my my raw powers of x are. So x to the 2r is negative 1 to the 6 minus r. Now this is, I've got a 2 here to the r minus 6, and I've got an x to the r minus 6. Right, now if I just, if I put my x terms together, as in I, I add my powers, and remember what I've got the same base, I can add the powers together. So I'm still working my general term. It's 6cr, I've got minus 1 to the 6 minus r, that's just going to be an alternating sign thing. I've got 2, when I've got a base of negative 1, it just is either plus 1 or minus 1. I've got 2 to the r minus 6, and importantly now I've got x to the 2r plus r minus 6, so that's 3r minus 6. Now, what do we want for the term independent of x? Okay, so to be independent of x, to be independent of x, right, we need 3r minus 6 to be equal to, what's going to get rid of x here? What's going to give us a term with no x in it? Well, it's going to be 3r minus x is equal to 0. When I've got x to the 0, it's gone. I've got a constant. I've got no x term now. So therefore, I want r to be equal to 2. So substituting back in, so therefore, my constant term, which is another way of saying my term independent of x, my constant term is 6c2, 6c2, negative 1 to the 6 minus 2, so negative 1 to the 4, that's just going to be 1, 2 to the r minus 6, so that's 2 to the negative 4, um, and then obviously I've got six uh, x sorry to the zero. So I just need to calculate this guy out now. Six c two. I'll go and get six c two. What's that equal to? Uh, menu five three, and I punch in six comma two to get fifteen. So I get fifteen here. Negative 1 to the 4, well that's just um, 1, and 2 to the negative 4 is 1 over 16, so the result is 15 over 16. Okay, so now exercise 1i, one, uh, one and we're going to do all the questions in exercise 1i. I'm going to give you some time to do that, but we're going to do the first one with you, question 1a. I'm happy for you to pause this and do it yourself. We're asked Ask for the first four terms. I still think it's worth checking back. You've got to make sure you're doing these right. The first four terms in the binomial expansion. Now, the first four terms, it's a bit ambiguous, isn't it? Because we can start this in whichever order we want. So I'm going to go with, um, we're going to go with, so the first four terms are going to read 11C0. Um, now I'm going to have 1 to the power of 11. And I'm going to have negative x over 3, this kind of messy looking term here, that's going to be to the 0. Okay, that's my first term. My second term is 11c1. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to keep writing 1 to the power of because that's just 1, right? So I'm just going to concentrate now on this negative x over 3, which is just going to raise by 1 each time. So 11c2 now, minus x over 3, that's squared. 
and I've just got one more term to consider. 11c3 minus x over 2 now cubed. There's my first four terms. Okay, well, what does this come to? This is 1, this is 1, and this is 1. So that whole thing is 1. 11c1, I know that's going to be 11. All right, so it's 11 by negative x over 3. So negative x over 3. We can tidy this up um, shortly. 11c2, I'm not sure what 11c2 is. So I've got a calculator for this sort of thing. I've got menu 5, 3, 11, C2. Hit enter. That's 55. So I'm going to go 11C2 is 55 by, uh, so now I'm squaring negative x over 3, so that gives me x squared over 9. One more term, 11C3. You can see how useful this is now. This is Pascal's triangle in your calculator. 11C3. We're going straight to the 11th row of Pascal's triangle and the fourth term along. 11C3. And that gets me 165. Back in here, I've got 165 by now. This is negative x cubed over 8. So let's just tidy this up now. I'm going to have 1 minus 11x on 3 uh, plus 55 and 9 I don't believe have anything in common so it'll be 55 x squared over 9 165 and 8 I'm not sure have anything in common either so this will be minus 165 x cubed over 8 and there's our first four terms it's a pretty punchy question 1a I think but uh, I'm going to leave you guys now to do b and c and then the rest of exercise 1i.